So welcome back. This is part two of our online tutorial series. And in this tutorial, we're going to be looking at designers layout view. So the layout view is essentially an area where you can drop fixtures to create a 2D plan of your project. You can also group fixtures, which is going to later help you target them with specific lighting effects and programming. And overall, it's going to help you organize your project file and also help you simulate the lighting effects that you've created. The idea being that you can drop fixtures onto this plan and then it will give you a better visualization of your project as a whole. So within Designer, we now support multiple layout views. You can create new layouts by going to the top left hand corner and clicking new. This in turn will create a new layout and this is particularly useful if you're using uh, or you're creating a project file that's for a building with multiple sides, multiple facades or if you're just using different uh, zonal areas or even different floors. To keep things nice and simple for today, we're just going to be using one layout. So I can go ahead and delete that layout. But what I am going to do to start off with is I'm just going to set up some of the basic parameters for the layout view. And I'm also going to bring in a background image. The background image has to be either a JPEG or a TIFF. We don't support CAD files, but it can be used uh, with something like a schematic as long as the correct file type is supported. I'm going to go ahead and click manage. And then the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set the width and the height of the project file. Now, I know that the background image that I'm going to be using and that you guys will be importing will be 10, 1080 by 840. So now if I want to bring in that background image that I was talking about, I can do so by clicking on the blue folder here. Once I've clicked on that, a new window is going to open up. And what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to navigate to the training uh, folder resources that you downloaded from our website. And once you've gone to the training files, within that folder, there is a image called TC background 1080 by 840 stretch. Go ahead, click open. And the final thing that you're going to need to do, the background mode needs to be set to stretch. That's just something that's specific to this image. You may not always have to do that, but in order to get it to scale up correctly for this project file, you will have to do that. Underneath that, you have a couple of other options that I'm going to quickly look at. As you can see, there is a grid on the background. This grid is going to help you lay out fixtures and keep them aligned. Your fixtures are actually going to snap to this grid. And what you may want to do is you may want to turn the grid spacing down a bit. Uh, our default is 24 by 4, but I'm going to turn the grid spacing down to around about 10 or 11. If you really want to, you can turn the grid off or you can also turn the option for the fixtures not to snap to grid. But for the moment, I'm going to keep those both enabled. As I said earlier, having them, having the fixtures snap to grid sometimes keeps your fixtures nice and aligned. So once you've done that and you click on your uh, background, you can then zoom out just to make sure that the background image fits perfectly with your layout. Just a couple other things you've probably seen me do. You can zoom in and you can zoom out using the magnifying glasses up here. But alternatively, you can use Control Plus and Control Minus if you're a window user. Or if you're a Mac user, just replace Control with Command. So Control Minus, Control Plus. There's also another option to make sure that the background image zooms to a optimal size or if you actually want it to zoom to the actual size of the background image, you can do that as well. There is a percentage that you can zoom by. And finally, next to that, there is also a mini map. So if you're working on very big project files with really big images and you want to move around them quickly, you can do so like I am demonstrating now. Okay, so we've got our background image set up. And the next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to get the correct fixtures for our project and we're going to want to import those into designer. So first off, I'm just want to direct you to the right hand side. This is our fixture library. Now I have the full fixture library because I've downloaded it from our server already. If you've just installed designer, it will come with our basic fixture library. But essentially it's the same idea. You'll have a set of fixture manufacturers. And then within the fixture manufacturers, you will have the 
different types of fixture models that they produce and you'll have sometimes a different set of modes for those fixtures as well. Now for today's project file we're going to be using uh, a specific set of fixtures that we've created for this training file and what you're going to probably need to do right now if you haven't got them in your uh, project file already is you're going to download them from our online server. Now that's nice and easy to do. You can download more fixtures from our online server by going to the top right hand corner, clicking on the cloud icon, which will bring up the online fixture library. And now what you can do is simply search for fixture manufacturer, in this case, Pharos. That's going to give you that manufacturer. And then if you click on the manufacturer's name, it will select all of the fixtures and you can go ahead and download those. Just as a side note, whilst those fixtures are downloading, of course, you can use our online service to download the fixtures for, for your own project files. But if there is a fixture type or, or, or manufacturer that doesn't appear within that library, just email us at support with a DMX chart. We'll make it up for you. And then hopefully you can then just download that and bring that straight into your project file. Failing that, we'll send it to you um, and you can bring it in via a different method. Okay, so that looks like it's done now. I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to search for Pharos. And as you can see, all of the fixtures for Pharos architectural controls are now there. Specifically, we're going to be using these demo fixtures at the bottom here. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be placing those in a little while onto the background image. And that's going to then build the layout for us. Now, one thing that you will need to look at, which is in the training resources folder as again, is the uh, cheat sheet or the fixture layout that uh, comes included with those files. And within those files, within that file rather, you'll notice that there is a, uh, a, a fixture layout that has four different columns, fixture numbers, fixture type, universe and channels. And also you'll notice that there are numbers designated for the positions of specific fixture types uh, on the image just above that. So you have a quick look at that now. I should be showing it on screen. What we're going to do is we're going to actually start off with the uh, area in the top left hand corner, which I'm selecting right now. So the very first fixture, fixture number one, if I look at the columns and rows in front of me, I can see that that is a demo RGB downline. So I'm just going to go ahead. I'm going to select that from our fixture library. I'm going to drag and I'm going to drop that into the far left hand position and I'm just going to stay there. So once we've got that fixture into position, what I want to do now is just show you a couple quick shortcuts that you can use to duplicate fixtures across your project file, saving you a little bit of time. So the first command that I'm going to use is going to be to copy the fixtures over. All I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down my command button because I'm using OS X. If you're a Windows user, hit control and then I'm just going to drag out. And that's going to make a copy of that fixture. If I keep that fixture, uh, if I keep that button down, I can click on the fixture again. And again, I can just pull out and create a duplicate fixture and drop that in the necessary position. Also, just one other thing as well, just to quicken up the process again, what you can also do is select multiple fixtures and you can also copy and paste those as well really quickly just by selecting the fixtures using the lasso tool. You can do that by clicking outside of the uh, fixture, just dragging out, going to select all the fixtures. And again, depending on your OS, hit control command and just drag out and then you can create multiple fixtures with lots of ease. Really nice and simple, really quick, and obviously uh, will save a little bit of time rather than just drag and dropping fixtures from the library over and over again. Designer does have the ability to create specific shapes such as rectangle circles or even lines. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you how to do that in the bottom left-hand area. So this is referred to sometimes in our training sessions as the chandelier area. And the first thing that we're going to look at is the set of fixtures just at the top here where I'm selecting. Again, I'm going to go back to the cheat sheet. I'm going to look up the fixture number. I can see it's fixture number 70. And I can also see that they are tunable white fixtures. So I'm going to go to the tunable white cove fixture in my library. It's the second one from bottom. 
I'm just going to go ahead, drag that, drop that into the far left hand corner. Now, again, you know, I could copy and paste them over as I've just shown you. But what I want you to do is I want you to actually duplicate them uh, using one of our features within Designer. Now, you can use the duplicate fixture feature by right clicking on the fixture itself, going to duplicate. And that's going to open up a new window for you. Now, what I can do is here, here is I can create a line of fixtures by simply just typing in the amount of fixtures that I want to create uh, from left to right. So in this scenario, that would be 10 and keeping the height at one just so that it creates a single line. So that's going to be 10 by one. And then I'm going to hit finish. Once that's done, that'll create a set of fixtures for you. And again, just like we've done before, I can hit command or control. I can drag and drop that to the bottom and that's going to create another set of fixtures for me. So what I want to just quickly do now is I want to have a look at some of the fixture properties that you can use to manipulate fixtures as well. So go ahead, get another tunable white fixture, drag and drop that to the side. What you'll notice is it's the wrong way around. Now in your fixture properties, you can quickly adjust that. So if we go over to the right hand side where the fixture properties appear, you'll see that one of the fixture properties that we have down at the bottom is the angle and that's going to help us rotate that fixture. So I'm just going to type in 90 to rotate that and there you go. You can see that that's now rotated that fixture 90 degrees. Whilst we're here, I just want to have a quick look at some of the other fixture profile, uh, some of the other fixture properties. At the top here, we have the manufacturer, Faris Architectural Controls. You'll also notice that it has a number next to it. That number is just an identification number for uh, the fixture manufacturer. Underneath it, same thing, model, but it has, again, another ID number. That's, again, for the model of fixture. And finally, you have a mode. So some fixtures, they have a 8-bit or 16-bit, sometimes called a advanced or extended mode and that number will change as the mode obviously changes underneath that we have a fixture number which is just an arbitrary number that we give each fixture it's not to be confused with a dmx address or a patching number we'll show you how to do that later on but you can use this fixture number sometimes to target specific fixtures later on in your programming if you need to we have a name we have some notes we have an X, Y position, which is its coordinates, its position on the screen, the angle, which I've just shown you, the ability to lock the fixture so it can no longer be moved. We have the width and height, so that's in pixels, so it's 40 pixels by 24 pixels. And then finally, we can change that shape from a square to a circle if we need to. We can put a gel color over it. And then finally, we have a dimmer curve, which we can set to fixtures, and we can also cap it with a maximum intensity. So now that I've done that, I'm just going to quickly go ahead and I'm just going to finish off these two sides. Again, I'm going to right click, duplicate. This time I'm going to give it a height of four and a width of one. This is going to create a nice vertical line. And again, I'm just going to move that over into position by using the commands that I showed you earlier. Just use the control command copy uh, function and there we go. So as well as rectangular shapes like lines or even uh, squares, what we can do, we can also do uh, circles. So I'm just going to go ahead and go back to the fixture layout sheet, which we've been talking about earlier on. And I'm going to look up the demo chandelier special fixtures. And that's the fixtures over here. And if I look, it says demo chandelier special RBG. Let me go find that in my fixture library. There it is. And I'm just going to go ahead and drag that into the 12 o'clock position. Now, one thing I should notice, as you move the fixture to the left or right, it's automatically going to snap to grid. But what you can do is you can hold down shift and you can then escape that behavior so you can get it right into position. Once you're happy with that, what you can go ahead and do then is you can click on duplicate. So right click, duplicate. And instead of using the rectangular option, we're going to use the circular option. Now, we've got three different parameters here which we need to fill out. The first is the radius, which, like everything within Designer, within the layout view, is with 
uh, the use of pixels or using pixels. So I'm just going to go ahead and estimate this at around 50 pixels. It's okay if it's not 100% perfect. I'm going to show you how to adjust that later on. The count is the amount of fixtures that we want to duplicate. So in this case, there are 12 fixtures. So I'm going to type 12. And then finally, there's the start angle. And that's the starting position from where we want to then duplicate those fixtures. So zero degrees is perfectly fine. We can leave that as it is. Once I'm happy with that, I'm going to then go ahead, click finish. And that's then going to go ahead and duplicate those sets of fixtures into a nice circle. Now, some of you who have got keen eyes may notice that if I zoom in a little bit, it's not 100% perfect and would be good just to adjust that just so that it's as close as possible to the real thing. We can do this using something really, really powerful within Designer called the Transform Tools. So once your fixtures are selected, once they go red, you'll notice that up in the top right hand corner, we have something called the Transform Tools. And if I click those, you'll notice we have a whole host of options that appear around the sets of fixtures which we have selected. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna to go to the right hand corner where the little square is. And if I hover over it, you'll notice that I can then just drag out the fixtures and get those perfectly into position. And once I'm happy with that, I can go ahead and I can just copy those over. Again, if you want to get them perfectly into position, use shift to escape the snapped grid. There we go. Nice in position. Brilliant. Okay. So, so far we've gone through the following things. We've, we've, learned some shortcuts we've learned how to use the duplication tools and we've also uh, brought in a background image and and managed to get our project file pretty organized but there's one other thing that we can do to organize sets of fixtures so that they're slightly easier to target with our programming later on and that's called making groups of them now what you will notice if i go over to the left hand corner we have these folders which are groups but they are just the folders that are created by default, by designer, and specifically, they are just the different fixture types that we've got within our project file. If you want to make your own groups of fixtures, it's very simple to do. You can simply select a set of fixtures, right click on the fixtures in question, and then you can then hit new group. That's going to then create a group which you can label. So I'm going to refer to this as my chandelier area. And I can now use that in my programming later on and then target that with lighting effects and different kinds of actions. Okay, so if you want to now, you can go ahead and build the rest of the project file. Just obviously make sure that you take your time, put the right fixtures in the right places. It's really important that you use the right fixture personalities. Obviously, that's how designer and how our software knows how to control those fixtures. So it is important that you do use the right fixture types within your project. Failing that though, just one or two other things to go through. You can always use fixtures from our generic library. Uh, a lot of the time we do get fixture requests in uh, uh, that uh, you know are from specific manufacturers, but they're, they're just standard LEDs like RGB or RGB white LEDs. We've got a whole host of generic fixtures that you can use within our library in place of that. Just make sure it is the right fixture type because then we'll be able to control it correctly. Okay, so you, as I said, you can go ahead now and fill out the uh, rest of the layout. If you don't want to do that and you've already got to grips with that and you feel fairly comfortable, what you can do is you can import something called a CSV file. And this is probably going to be the last thing I show you within this uh, tutorial. Now, CSV files are essentially Excel spreadsheets that contain data uh, that we can pull into Designer to allow us to build project files. So if I give you a quick look at one, what one looks like, and in fact, you can follow along because we're going to bring this in now and it's in the training resources. So if you go to your file explorer and then if you go to where the training files are, and then if you go to the training patch and layout folder, and then go to layout and finally look at the layout one export.csv file, give you a quick preview of what that looks like. Uh, you'll have a file that looks a little bit like something like this. So the name, 
or it's obviously the fixture name. You have a fixture number that just needs to be unique to the fixtures. Then you also have a comment section, which if you want to, you can leave blank. But the important things here are the manufacturer ID, which is going to point to a specific manufacturer within our library. A model ID, which is going to point to a specific model within that manufacturer's folder. A mode ID, as I've explained earlier, will be the different type of mode that fixture has. And then finally, the width and height to determine the size, the X and Y to determine the position, and then an angle to determine how it's rotated. This CSV file is particularly useful if you're working with really big projects that have a lot of fixtures in them. Most of the time when designers are you know, coming up with their project ideas or, or when something uh, a project has gone live, they'll normally be up either one or two things depending on, on the size of the project. Normally there'll be a AutoCAD file, or normally there'll be a, some kind of WYSIWYG file as well. What you can do is you can export data from those bits of software. We have tutorials on that online, so I'm not going to go into how to do that now, but it is available. And once you've exported that data, as long as you can format it in this exact format, you can then import that into Designer, which is going to save you a lot of time building your layouts. So it really is advisable if you're working on big projects that have got hundreds or even thousands of fixtures, that sometimes you have to think about going down the CSV route, making sure that you can can import the file uh, just like this format just so you can save yourself a bit of time so I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do that right now so I'm just going to click off of this I don't want my fixtures to overlap these fixtures that I've already laid out so I'm going to just go ahead I'm going to select them I'm just going to get rid of them and then finally once I've done that I'm going to then right click over here I'm going to go to import object. I'm going to go to fixture, which is the top left hand corner. And then I'm going to click on the blue folder icon. I'm going to look for the file that I've just mentioned. So just so a recap, if you go to the training folder, then you go to the training patch and layout folder up here, then layout, then layout one export.csv load that in click next it'll give you a preview of what the file looks like looks good to me click next again and then finally it's going to ask you what layout you want to bring that into i'm going to go ahead and bring that out into layout number one click next hopefully you'll get no errors if you do make sure that you've checked you've downloaded the correct fixture types also make sure that you don't have any conflicting fixture numbers so you might have to get rid of any fixtures that you've dropped on the layout and then you can hit retry and hopefully it'll bring in the file. Once you're happy with that, click finish. And there you go. It's now brought in all of the different types of fixtures within my project and it's loaded them here. So I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to make groups with all the different fixtures just to finish up. So I'm going to click here. I'm going to call these down lights. I'm going to just quickly delete that. Remember this. I'll call these chandelier. I'm going to call these my stairs. And then finally, I'm going to finish off and I'm going to just call this my tower. Okay, great. If you've missed any of that, make sure you go back, just recap over it, rewind the video, because uh, we'll be moving on to the next view and the next tutorial. Uh, but of course, um, you know, just uh, try your best to obviously keep going and following along with the tutorials.